Hello, my name is Dr. Anya O'Connor, and I'm a program coordinator of the Nutrition and Health Science program here in AIT. So today I just want to take you through the program, what the minimum entry requirements are, the modules you could expect to cover as part of the program, and most importantly, what career could you gain following completion of the Nutrition and Health Science program? So just to begin there at the beginning, looking firstly at the minimum requirements for the program. So they include having a minimum grade H5 at higher level in two subjects, plus a minimum of grade 06 or H7 at ordinary level in four other subjects in the Leaving Certificate. And two of those six subjects must be mathematics and also a language which can be either English or Irish. We also recognize the Quality and Qualification Ireland or QQI awards. So any major QQI award with three distinctions and a pass in mathematics, which is the code 5N1833 or maths for STEM, which is known as 5N0556 or, or leaving certificate maths at 06 H7. So as you can see in the current academic year, the number of points required to gain entry onto this program was 334. Just to say as well for any mature students out there that we do also offer places for mature students as well. And in this process, mature applicants, they, for example, may be required to attend for an interview at AIT as part of the selection process. And in every year and in the previous year, we tend to have one or two um, mature students enter every year into the programme. So the department does welcome applications from mature students and such applicants may not be required to have the minimum entry requirements. However, the Institute do look for satisfactory evidence of the applicant's ability to pursue and benefit from the course. So knowledge and skills gained through other types of learning will be taken into account. So just to overview the course then, so this is a level eight BSc in Nutrition and Health Science, and it is a four year program. And so with this program, I suppose it's unique to other programs in that there is an equal emphasis both on the health sciences and nutrition. So the primary aim of this program is to develop expertise in nutrition and apply the knowledge and the related skills that you learn in the program to health science and public health. So essentially with this program, what we're trying to do uh, me as part of a team of lecturers in the department is that um, we're trying to equip students with the subject's expertise and skills for professional practice, for example, as a nutritionist or to go on and do advanced studies at a master's or doctorate level. So just to take you through now the types of modules you could expect to cover over the four year program. So as you can see, the program is module in nature. OK, so it's delivered and in, in broken up into modules, which generally are either five or 10 credit, credits are awarded for each module, as you can see here in the table. Um, and then overall in the four years, you would be awarded 60 credits each year, which amounts to 240 credits for the program. So your first stage, for example, or year one, as shown here, is worth 60 credits. And as you can see with the types of modules that are on offer here in your first year, you're very much building on the scientific principles of the core sciences such as chemistry for sport and health, the fundamentals of health science and human nutrition, introduction to health promotion, and that's a module I teach on myself. And that module will introduce students to the concepts, models and principles of health promotion. 
So from that, then the student would have an understanding of the importance of the main factors influencing the health of population. As well as that, we equipped you for um, life in higher education and equip you with, for example, the IT skills that you need to um, succeed as a scientist. And that is what is achieved through the module information technology for scientists. So for example, you know, you learn things like how to use advanced operations in Excel. We also offer the learning and development for higher education module. And the aim of that module is to support and motivate the learner about their chosen field of study and to help them to become independent learners by giving them the key academic skills required for a student to effectively learn in third level. So we do offer a supportive environment for our students. And just to say that any students maybe who feel that, you know, perhaps that they didn't, for example, study chemistry in their, their leaving cert, this is not something to be concerned about because the lectures are very helpful here in AIT. And in addition to that, we can also offer tutors and tutorial support to students if they, for example, need that. So in the second year of study, then what you could expect to cover include things like nutritional assessment. So this is really a core module in any person who's looking to qualify as a registered nutrition. So this module is designed to give students the opportunity to gain experience of different methods that are used, for example, to carry out a dietary assessment. So you'll learn about the theory of different ways that we can measure people's diets, for example, by food diaries. And you will also learn how to do that in practice too. You will also cover modules such as human uh, pathophysiology, which is essentially a module that looks at the theoretical underpinning for the concepts and mechanisms of disease processes. You will also begin to cover behavioural aspects. So we know behavioural aspect is very important in improving people's health. For example, you cover there a um, psychology module, and that aims to introduce students to broad theories and principles around psychology and provide a foundation for the application of psychological theories to the health and sports sciences. You will also cover and develop various um, professional skills now, moving on into your second year. For example, in the marketing and applied internship module, which introduces students to business, particularly marketing and entrepreneurial skills, which would be very useful for anyone who's looking, for example, to work as a consultant nutritionist after graduation. In the third year then, you can see here that the number of modules is uh, smaller. You will only be on campus for the first semester. So the second semester, you'll be on a work placement. And as you can see, the work placement is a large component of your third year credits award. There's 30 credits award to the professional workplace experience. So that professional workplace experience is a 15 week placement. And I'll come back to talk to you about that in a little while. So other modules you could expect to cover include epidemiology in public health, which is particularly important at the moment, given the pandemic that we're living in. So understanding, for example, the role of nutrients potentially in our immunity. So for example, vitamin D and COVID-19, it's been observed or seen in populations that have low vitamin D levels, that they fare worse, for example, if they um, were to have the infection of the COVID-19. So within that module, students will look at the underlying principles of public health epidemiology and how it can provide evidence for policy and public health agendas. They will also learn, for example, how, what, how do we set, for example, bases for different um, guidelines and where do they come from? For example, our food pyramid is based on science evidence. They will also explore nutrition through the life cycle, which students generally find to be quite an interesting module because that explores how nutritional needs 
change throughout the life cycle. And it will also look to strengthen students' knowledge of nutritional requirements for different population groups. So it's understanding, for example, how the nutritional needs of a pregnant woman may differ than to, for example, a woman in um, her older life. Then in your final year, you now begin to delve into more, for example, um, refining some of those scientific skills that are required in research through your research project module. And this module is designed to engage students in formal scientific research to uh, develop skills in project management, acquiring data, how to evaluate the data that they've collected, how they can communicate that data, that scientific data. And as you can see, that makes up a large portion of the credits in your final year. It's worth 20 credits. And generally, we have a good variety of different projects, both lab-based and also um, other types of studies, for example, running studies with human volunteers, where you may, for example, um, use a questionnaire. So generally, the lecturing staff on the health science, nutrition and health science programme will come up with the types of projects um, that students may be interested in pursuing. So for example, me personally, I have an interest in the early years nutrition, and I have two projects looking at, for example, weaning practices in, um, among parents in the first year of life. So um, other then types of modules in your final year, which would be different, I suppose, is where you're looking at including some behavioral and emerging issues such as ecological issues in health and food and health and nutrition in health and disease. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Where this module provides a learner with detailed knowledge, understanding and appreciation of nutrition in terms of prevention, management and treatment of human diseases, such as diabetes, for example. Another key module in your final year is the health promotion and population health module. So health promotion is a key aspect to the program. And so for the final year students, they um, come up with and determine and carry out an intervention in the uh, general healthy population, focusing on a specific uh, group of individuals, which we'll come on to explain now in a little while. So that's just a brief overview of the different types of modules you could expect to cover in this programme. So as you can imagine, given the strong basis in scientific core modules, you would gain excellent lab skills through various practicals. So a number of modules, especially the core science modules, students will complete laboratory practicals, refining those practical skills. As well as that, they will also refine practical skills of nutritionists, such as uh, nutrition education, how to talk to different audiences, health promotion, and how to, for example, analyze diets and make nutritional recommendations based on analyzing diets, for example, by designing mean plans. And these take place in tutorials and small group learning environment to supplement the lectures each week. In terms of the assessments for the modules, I won't get into those, but just to say that we use a variety of assessment modes. For example, it's not just about written exams. We also provide nice opportunities to do practical coursework based assignments and also to develop communication skills through students completing presentations. So moving on and looking at the work placement aspect to this module. So this is where the student will really, I suppose, put into practice the theories that they have learned in the three years up to that in their programs. So they complete the placement and um, it can be carried out, for example, in the food industry, the pharma sector, the HSC, in the health promotion domain, and research groups. So last year, uh, students were placed throughout the Republic of Ireland, and there were also a few in Northern Ireland. 
So just to give you a flavor where some of those students were placed, for example, we had students in the dietetic department of the Tullamore Hospital in Offaly. We also had students in Portiuncla Hospital, as you can see here. And we did have a number of students who were working at the research group in the Galway Mayo Institute of Technology. With the remainder being in the Rotunda Hospital in Dublin, some students working in AIT as part of the Healthy Campus AIT initiative, which is a health promotion initiative for staff and students. And we also had other students working in health promotion in MUI Galway, in the health promotion research group there. And we had a number of two other students working in universities in the north of Ireland, in Queen's University and also Coleraine University. And finally, we had one student working in the Health and Fitness Ireland group. So as I mentioned, health promotion is a key part of this, of this programme. And throughout the various years of the programme, students get a chance, I suppose, to put their health promotion into practice. So just to give you some examples of where students design and develop and carry out and evaluate programs in the community. Some examples are shown here, here. So for example, as you can see here, the picture of the children, the second year nutrition and health science students work with schools in the Athlone area, with in primary schools, working on um, healthy eating activities such as using, for example, games, to inform uh, young children in primary schools. As well as that, we also um, have carried out work. For example, I also coordinate the health promotion module in the final year. And in the last number of years, we have carried out health promotion activities in active retirement groups in Athlone and the surrounding areas. And for the last previous two years, we have had an opportunity to work with breastfeeding mothers in the community as part of the HSE, breastfeeding support groups, also the Friends of Breastfeeding Group and the Kutu support group. So supporting mothers about supporting them how to eat well at this life stage. And generally, I find students really enjoy this aspect of applying their learning and going out and working with people in the community. As was mentioned by um, the previous graduate student, Gillian, uh, she mentioned that she really enjoyed the primary school aspect to giving presentations to students. Uh, a key strength, I suppose, to this programme is that the programme recently in the summer months has become accredited by the Association for Nutrition, who are an independent regulator for registered nutritionists. And essentially this programme, by receiving that accreditation, it's really, I suppose, given a rubber stamp or a quality mark to the program because the AFN only awards accreditation to those degree programs that meet high standards set out by the Association for Nutrition. So it's a, essentially it's a key benefit I suppose to new uh, students starting in the program because after graduation they can go through the direct entry pathway to obtaining a qualification of an associate nutritionist. So they can use the letters A, M, U, T, or, or associate nutritionist after their names without having to go through a lengthy process of additional assessments that is required from graduates from degree programs that aren't accredited. So it's essentially saying then that if students get that, it's recognizing that they have met the competencies and requirements to be a registered associate nutritionist. And more importantly, something that is happening more and more is that employers who are looking for um, these as requirements, they're often prerequisites for um, getting a job in nutrition. 
So just to look at some of the careers then you could consider as part of this program, what can you get at the end of the program? So for example, you can work in the health sector within, for example, the HSE. You could work in health promotion or in research. In the food industry, the pharma industry, hospitals and universities. And you could also pursue further study if you so wish or work as a nutrition advisor, or we've also had students and current students working in sales and marketing type roles. So I suppose just to put into context, so the students who graduated, our most recent students who graduated in 2019, by the time they were coming to graduation, 92% of those students were in work related to nutrition or a health related area. So for example, just to give you a flavor, I guess, where students have gone. So for example, we have um, had students apply to graduate programs through the food industry. So we've had a few students get success there in the graduate programs, for example, for Lakeland Dairies, Glombia and Kerry Foods. And others then are working for a variety of Irish food companies, for example, um, in Kerry Foods and c and Foods in Mullingar. And others then maybe have gone on to do further study, for example, in dietetics, and they would have gone to study that, for example, in um, the north of Ireland or in London and other places in the UK. We've also had a few students go on to do, for example, a PhD in Chagask, in UCD, in UL, and more recently in Athlone IT. We're now offering PhDs in nutrition. We've also had students go on to work as research uh, assistants in, for example, UCD, in Cambridge, in the UK, and also GMIT. And we've also had students work, go on to work in the pharma industry, for example, Abbott and Roche. So as you can see, there is a wide variety of different types of careers you could pursue following completion of the degree. So finally then, just to give you an overview about our department. So the Department of Sport and Health Science is very much an engaged, informed and progressive teaching style. We are very much team focused and do uh, support a motivational ethos throughout our staff, but also amongst our students as well. Our department also recognises gender equality, and that is very much embedded in teaching and learning activities in the college. So we have good staff expertise. We have a number of full-time qualified to doctor level staff members who are reputable practitioners, for example, as working as registered nutritionists or dietitians who are research active and very much engaged with activities in community and also in industry. So for example, there are three full-time lecturers working on the Nutrition and Health Science Programme and three of us would be qualified as registered nutritionists with the AFN and also are, have qualifies in uh, qualifications in, P, in our PhDs. And in the summer there, we did offer two new PhD where students were offered uh, PhDs in the Sport, Health and Exercise Research Group over the summer, one looking at sodium and heart health and the other looking at changes in body weight and size during the menopause. So we also have some excellent facilities on campus, as you can see in the image here. We have a sports science lab, we have a biomechanics lab, we have a health science lab, and that's, for example, where we do a number of practicals on dietary analysis and food portion practicals as well as uh, state-of-the-art science labs. So that brings us to the end of this presentation. And I suppose I just want to get across as a final note that this program is and uh, does offer an approach to nutrition that is based on the core scientific and academic principles 
of those key science subjects while also offering social and public health aspects of human nutrition while at the same time accompanying emerging issues such as biotechnology, food sustainability and food security. So through these skills the, that the student will develop on our programme and the work placement on offer, it will prepare students for a successful and productive area career rather in the area of health science and nutrition. So finally then, I just want to leave you here with a student um, testimonial who was a student who gra graduated just one year ago now, Amy Taggart. So I just let you to read that quote there and I would thank you for your time. Thank you everybody.